Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Mignelli. I'm here to introduce a very exciting equine assisted learning program called Power Tools for Living. This program has been found to be effective in a variety of settings and wide applicability in both remediation and in prevention. The program really sprung out of my 40 years experience as a psychologist in a number of different settings. In all of these settings, I've always had in mind what could have stopped problems in the first place, what could have helped people prevent developing ongoing lives of real difficulty. These settings included inpatient psychiatric hospitals, inpatient substance abuse and alcoholism treatment programs, community mental health centers, university counseling centers, and predominantly private practice over the last 30 years in the Carmel area of, here in California. My wife, who's a psychiatric nurse, and I looked back on thousands of cases and presenting problems, and we distilled a set of emotional health skills, the presence of which help people overcome problems and make changes. Equally important, we found that the presence of these skills and the ability to use these skills has helped people prevent long-term chronic problems that would plague their lives. About 10 years ago, my wife, my daughter, and I discovered EGALA, the Equine Assisting Growth and Learning Association, and we got involved in their training. We worked in our certification, we worked in going to continuing education programs, conferences, and we developed our skills and our capabilities in really doing equine assisted psychotherapy and equine assisted learning. We found that the equine assisted learning, as taught by the EGALA approach, blended very well with the constructs that we were traditionally using in our clinical practice. And if you will, the, the barn door kind of blew off in terms of the speed with which people were able to develop the skills. They practiced in the arena, they went home, they applied it in other parts of their lives, they came back the next week and were really enthusiastic about the changes they were able to make. The EAL format was cost effective, skill acquisition was rapid, and we were able to work in groups. We started researching this model. We pre-tested and post-tested our participants, and we found statistically significant data that indicated the effectiveness of the program, both in helping people develop interpersonal skills and confidence, but also reduce intra-emotional distress and, in a sense, be more in charge of their lives. The EGALA model was particularly helpful in that it assured professional ethics and professionalism in that a mental health professional licensed and also equine specialists were required to be present at all times during the presentation of the program. Dr. Daniel Goldman has written extensively on the subject of emotional intelligence. We were excited to find that the construct program, Power Tools for Living, developed under the EGALA model was very congruent with the acquisition of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is very important to life success. People who develop this and have this skill or set of skills have more successful marriages, more successful lives, have empathy in their relationships, are able to solve problems more effectively. In school settings, bullying is diminished, grades are improved, school attendance improves. It's a very powerful improvement tool that's needed throughout our culture and our society, and we're very excited that it was so congruent with the acquisition of these skills. To date, the program's been used extensively in public schools, private schools, boys and girls clubs, programs with children in foster care, even with people in ministry and church ministries. The program has been found to be effective in helping develop skills and the ability of groups to work together. We're really fortunate to have some responses from administrators from a school program where we work with Power Tools for Living with over 1,400 students. The administrators have seen the students come, go through the program, return to their schools, and they were kind enough to come and offer their observations as to the changes that they noticed in the students and also the changes that occurred in the schools as a result of that. Hi, my name is Mary Dawson and I am the Program Development Supervisor for the Monterey Peninsula Unified School District's Extended Learning Opportunities Department. 
I'm Patsy Oxford. I was the coordinator for extended learning for after school programs for Monterey Peninsula Unified School District. And now I'm the principal at La Mesa Elementary School, which participates in the horsepower program up at the ranch in Carmel Valley. I've been with the program since its inception and uh, met with uh, Dr. Rob and coordinated with the program and the values of the program working with our students in after school. My name is Ellen Hersom and I am the site director of La Mesa Elementary After School Academy. And I've been with the program for over a year now and uh, am fully supportive of the horse program. What I've seen over the years of working with the program is the students when they're at the school in that environment, day in and day out, they, there's certain behaviors or patterns that um, are expected, I, I think, and so the staff see them that way and that's how the students react. When they go out to the program, it, you get to see them in their, their true selves and, and who they really are, their personalities come out when they're in the presence of those horses. So it's, it's been phenomenal to watch the students and their behavior and how it's changed um, going out to work with the with the horses and I think a big part of that is because the horses are not judgmental they don't look at how the students dressed or they don't know what their 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 nationality is or where their parents grew up or what their surname is um, so it's an equal playing field and the students recognize that so it's been phenomenal to watch how it's helped them develop over the years and and we continue to go back because um, not only myself, but even the administrators in the district recognize the success of the program. When it started, um, we had just one or two schools that came and worked with the program uh, on a weekly basis, and we did four-week modules, and then expanded that to other sites. And of course, typically, the students and their parents think, oh, we're going to be riding the horses. And then we explain what equine therapy is, and how horses are most like humans, and then tell them the activities that they'll be doing, and then it's kind of an aha moment, and, and they understand it, but they can't visualize it, and then when the students go the very first time and come back and tell them what a wonderful program it is, then they get the rest of the picture. But we started small at a couple of schools, and now we rotate it around between our 18 school sites. I found that the kids, once they understand how they can reach success, all they want to do is feel that feeling of success. When they've seen how they can work and understanding these concepts through working with the horses, when they come back to the school site and they see an opportunity to help another student that just doesn't have that self-confidence to go ahead and do something, that they, they jump at the opportunity to go over and help and literally take them by the hand and walk them through some of the steps that they've heard at Horsepower. After going to the ranch, we see the students' behavior and, and their self-correction of in relationship skills, they go and introduce themselves um, to other students and as well as adults. Uh, they're definitely more empathetic toward each other, whereas before it would be laughter if someone's hurt on the playground. Now they actually will go and they try to help out and they, they try to put themselves in that person's shoes. And then the boundaries, they understand teachers and the respect that teachers should get in the classroom. And they will self-correct uh, very often when they're about to act up. You can just see their little bodies and it's like the recognition of, oh, wait a minute, I, I know how to do this differently now. So it's exciting to see that self-correction. When a conflict comes up, such as an argument between students, we can go back to the principles and the concepts that we learned at the horse program and walk the students through it using those keywords and helping them recall what they had learned and then implementing it with the rest of the academy. It's permeating the school currently. It, it has not reached its full capacity and we are talking and, and trying to figure out ways that we can get more students out so that really can become the culture of the school district. But I, I think, again, in the wisdom of our administrators in continuing the program is they do see the changes happening. And if we can get larger groups and more people there, then those changes will happen more quickly and more often. Um, so we, we start added other pieces like the parenting groups so that they can also see that change at home and the parents can reinforce the things that their students are learning. And then that too will permeate the school district and the school day. So again, we see the change. Is it as large as we would like for it to be? No, but we're working on how we can make that larger by getting more students out there and involved in the program. 
because many of these students don't get those social cues. They don't read other students, and by working with the animals and reading those nonverbal skills and things that horses show, they're able to see how that happens to them with people on the playground or at schools or even in their social lives, in their settings, dealings with friends and family because it allows them to go out there with their guard down and they realize the horse is not there to hurt them. The horse is just almost a mirror reflection of what their behavior is or what their personality or attitude is. And they understand that the horse is not judging them in any aspect other than, you know, what's, what's your reaction, what's your behavior, and the horse is gonna respond to that. And it helps them to realize that, oh, I can actually be nice or I can be respectful and the horse will follow me or the horse will um, help me with whatever it is I'm trying to do or I'm trying to set some boundaries here and understanding that physical boundary. The horses are really good at helping them see those things whereas a person talking doesn't necessarily give them that same structure or information because the horse is doing it, the ho it's the horse's nature and it's not about judgment or love or dislike or like, it's just the horse's nature. I remember one particular experience when one of the students that is rather abrupt here on campus, uh, he was asked to approach one of the horses and he did, he approached it head on, face on and walked straight up to it and the horse kind of brought his head up. And then he went to pet him and he kept doing the same thing, just bringing his hand up and putting his, trying to put his hand on the horse's nose, but because he was so abrupt about it, the horse kept pulling back, pulling back. And during the program, he, he was, um, given instruction that maybe that's just not working and you can try it a different way. Just as he does that with students here on campus, um, he was able to step back, think about his actions, realize how he could uh, change them according to what he had just learned at Horsepower, and now apply those principles to his interaction with students here on campus, and he has become more um, aware of his actions and more genuine in the way that he is interacting with the students. And the students that are bullies, it, it's, the, the student cannot bully the horse. Mm -hmm. So it suppresses the negative behaviors yeah. and brings out the best in them because they can't do what they normally do. And then in students who are extremely shy and, and not good communicators, it then brings out their communication skills. So it expands the weak skill and suppresses the skill that you don't want to see. Um, just by the horses being who they are and what they do and what they'll do with the students. So it's just such a natural consequence that just happens um, without, you know, being told or making a point. It just happens. And that's what's a, a really big value of the students working with the horses. The program is really helpful with other areas, not just with students, but with adults as well. Um, in churches, in marriages, uh, Friendships, it's, it, the tools are life skills, and they really are helpful in that. They, they being out with the horses in, in, in an environment where it's not people necessarily talking to you, but it's, it's the behavior that's being shown and that nonverbal communication, it takes you to another place and another level emotionally, and it helps you realize those areas that can be improved. And I'm not sure how the horses do that. It's just an amazing thing to be in their presence and to realize that oh, okay, if I do this and if I react this way, this is the respect I get or the boundary I get. And those same things transfer over into human life. And, and when we're dealing with each other as human beings, um, respect is so key and so large. And I think the more that we can respect each other, then we start to clearly understand one another those feelings and we start to, it's just gonna improve relationships for everyone, every, every walk of life, not just students, but adults and families as well. Words don't really describe the program. You have to see it to believe it. Um, and it's, it's, it's life-changing, it's exciting, it's fun. So it has all those things wrapped into one, but ultimately it really does make a difference in your life. And it really does make a difference in how you interact in the world with other people. And you truly start to see them for their true selves instead of who you want them to be, or who you've cultivated them to be, or who they've cultivated themselves into being. So I think if any, if any, if I could offer anything, it's try it. Um, even if you're skeptical, try it because it is successful. And if you go out there, you will be changed.
All right, Kevin, would you uh, mind please introducing yourself, uh, who you are, and basically what you do? Sure. Um, my name is Kevin McClelland. I'm an assistant superintendent for the Monterey Peninsula Unified School District. Uh, I work primarily in the alternative education. I guess you call it, we call it educational options, where we work with students who are at risk um, of dropping out. And, and one of the things that we try to do is uh, build assets and resiliency. A lot of these students have the cognitive ability to do well in school, it's just that they lack skills and there's other barriers that prevent them from learning. When, when you said assets, that, that triggered a thought in me immediately in terms of the fact that we love working with your students, particularly because it's really built around building skills. In fact, the program's called Power Tools for Living, EGALA Model. And the whole idea is building assets and strength because we see very bright students, but they need some tools to navigate through their world, especially at some of the, the more challenging places some of the kids might, uh, might have to come from. Well, sure. A lot of our students are, like you say, they're, they're in that, that uh, field and they don't have a lot of assets. Um, we have a lot of students that are connected with the juvenile justice system. They're already on probation. They've, uh, some of them have spent uh, extended period of times in, in uh, juvenile hall. So a lot of them, uh, as far as their uh, external assets, they're lacking. And, and then obviously, if you know, I don't need to tell you this, so with that internal assets are lacking. So a lot of what we've seen in working with your program is we've seen improvement and we've seen, uh, we've seen students doing not only well socially, but academically. And, mm -hmm. we, and we credit that with a lot of the work that you do with Horsepower. Thank you. That, that means a lot to us because we, we see your children come and I'll just light, flat out say we love working with your kids. They're, they are bright, they have all kinds of ideas, they present good challenges and sometimes tough challenges, but we're on our toes, but we also get to see real change at the ranch, but if it doesn't carry over into school and home and community, then I think we're kind of wasting our time. Well, I think the, the first year that we, we ran the program and we ran students through your program, mm -hmm. I, I think it was at that point um, my former counselor, Aaron Meyer, recognized the fact that a lot of the students were coming back and that they had changed. And it took, it took the full eight weeks that they were working with, with, <laughs> with your group, but, um, but it, was, it, it was a marked improvement from what we had seen before. So that, obviously that was the hook, and, and we knew, and, I, and anyone who's in education knows that we need more resources like this, and that they do work. And, and once you find something that, that is effective, you want to stay with it. So we've, obviously we've sent you plenty of students, and, and, and all along the way, uh, we have seen that same type of improvement. Of course, there's like those isolated cases where you can't get through to everyone, but um, <laughs> I think our staff does a pretty good job of, of finding those students that are rising to the top and that we need to pull and, and introduce them to, to the horsepower program. That's really helpful. Kevin, would you mind just uh, giving us an idea as to how you screen or how you select the particular students from your population that might be sent to Power Tools for Living in terms of, uh, of identification of the students that you think might benefit most? How do sure. you do that? We have, on our site, at our site, we have three schools. We have the Central Coast High School, which is a continuation school, and then we have two community day schools. We have a middle school and a high school. Community day school uh, students are usually uh, students who have um, behavior issues, primarily behavior issues. And then Central Coast, it's more of um, a combination of academic um, deficiencies, maybe some behavior issues and truancy. Mm -hmm. So it's a small environment. I have, uh, I have a counseling staff and I, I have an assistant principal. So when we work or screen for your program, basically what we do is we ask first for um, requests from the teachers if they give us any referrals and people who might benefit because they know about your program, program and what we're looking for. Uh -huh. And then our, our counselor, Araceli Conchola, and our assistant principal, uh, Mr. Manny Nunez, they work closely together to establish the groups. And what we look at are basically our priority group and then we have secondary groups. So that's why we run them uh, by the quarter. I mean, we, we try to run it every quarter. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that with each of the programs. With community day school students, it's a little easier. They all need it. So that's why this <laughs> spring, you're getting all of them. Great. So they'll all be referred Good. through the program and they'll all be able to, to participate. 
But the screening process, as far as uh, Central Coast is concerned, we're looking for those students who just have a difficult time adjusting um, to the to the classroom environment uh, and their and social socializing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really the social issues that interfere with them doing well academically. So th that's really what we're looking at, and we feel that. If we can get them in your program and, and they get a few visits in, we do actually see that change where they start to settle down and they start, they start to understand why they're here. Super. Well, that's super fulfilling to hear that. Would, would it be okay with you to, to give an idea? You, we got to know each other and we're honored to get to work with you and your students, and I really mean that. Honored. We love working with your kids. It's like you drive everybody crazy and tell them all. Uh, but there was a special situation where you actually called and asked for horses uh, to come to your campus. Would you mind just giving a little overview of what that was about and how that seemed to affect these, these little children that came out and worked with these horses? Sure. We, uh, I mean, we, we've uh, established this relationship with, with horsepower and, and obviously you, Dr. Rob, so um, Thanks, uh, that's been over the course of four years. So, um, and you've worked, you've worked directly with our population of students and, and we've seen, and we've seen benefits from it. Um, this last year in our community, in this community, we, we've had uh, an increase in gang violence. Uh, as a result of that, we had a young man who was a student here who was who was unfortunately killed uh, in an in a incident that happened over the weekend over a weekend in the fall. Um, when that occurred, I mean the wheels get set in motion, and um, I felt that I knew that we were going to need counseling on campus, and I felt that we knew about your program, and I have I have a pretty big facility here. I thought that. <laughs> We think a little bit, and, and I brainstormed with Manny, and we we said, why don't we try Dr. Rob and see if he can bring the horses out to us, because we're not going to bring be able to bring the whole school to you. And and you were uh, you were gracious enough to uh, get the trailers together and your staff together, and you brought them here, and we we let the students come out of their classes on their own free will, uh, that they could and they could work with the horses and. There were a lot of students that knew this young man, so we had a, a pretty, uh, a, a lot of students who reacted and, and came to you, and they worked that day. And, and I think because of that, um, the even though these students had to deal with grief, I think they were yeah. better equipped to, to deal with it. Even though, uh, I, I mean, in my opinion, and you know this, is that I, I think that our, our students get into activities that they really don't know what the ultimate consequences will be Absolutely. and they're not really uh, able to understand uh, some of these some of these issues but but once again having you there to work with the students and your staff working with our students I think that that helped at least with some of the grieving process and maybe not closure but bringing those students closer to a, a better place and, and understanding the, the, what happened and the tragedy. I really, uh, of, of all the things we've talked about over the last t 10 years and four years with you, that was the most poignant day. And being able to have, have you get the confidence in us to drive on here with trailers and horses and then for the kids to look, it's like, what's this about? And come over and then start really understanding it's a place to take that pain and put it in something other than, than acting out that could have consequences that they may have not have thought about or deny or push away. I think that you, you uh, I think, may have assisted with probably preventing a retaliation as well. Um, Kevin, would you please specify the short term and then if there are longer term changes that you've seen in the students that have come back from the program, how they've changed here at school and in this community? I think the, the, the most prominent change that we've seen in students is when they come back from your program, when they do the full program, mm -hmm. is they're, they're more calm. They're, they're more able to uh, focus. Right. Um, and then because of that, we start to see academic gains. So on that part, we, we see that. Then we hear, and this is sort of anecdotal information, mm -hmm. that we hear from the students that they're, they're not, when they don't come to me, but they come to some of my staff, sure. that they're not using uh, drugs or alcohol, and that they've stopped, 
Um, and, and so they become more directed and, and goal oriented. Mm -hmm. uh, so they start setting goals and, wow. and we've seen that. And I, I know that you speak often of Junior. Junior is a perfect example of that. Um, Junior was a student who was pretty much all over the place when we got him and then we put him in your program. And, uh, Junior benefited from two years of working mm -hmm. with horsepower, but he was one student when he reached about 17 years old, he did settle down quite a bit, realized that he wanted to graduate, kind of set that goal for himself, and he was a student that never felt that he would graduate, and he did. He ended wow. up graduating, he moved himself out of situations where he put himself at risk, um, so we saw a total change, and I think a, 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 that had a lot to do with horsepower. It's huge. That's huge. I, I remember him specifically telling me, thinking of one of the tools, Choices and Consequences, and specifically saying he had an opportunity to do something that he might have done before, but he would have had to face Marcella. Not me or even, even the superintendent, but this horse. Right. And he said, I didn't want to have to face the horse again if I did something I shouldn't do. Well, Junior is as big as a horse. <laughs> <laughs> he can lift one. <laughs> that's uh, true. Just that's about. True. No, he, he did a total 180, and, and wow. I, I think that um, Junior was another young man that didn't have a lot of those, those uh, external assets, and, and, and I think your program provided that wow. avenue where he started seeing he could be self-directed, and, and he could set goals, and that he could actually reach them. Um, I, I think for us it's very difficult to see students who don't have hope, and I, I think that's one of the aspects of your program, one of the, the, the valuable things that comes from it is that it does give them hope. They start to think differently. Of, of that term, I hadn't thought about that, but of all the, <clears throat> all the, you know, literally thousands of children that have come out, that's probably what we see these children light up with, is just that word. It's, they come off and what is this thing and why are they sending this out here? But they trust you enough to have, to come out to this ranch, you know, 10 miles away, but leaving with hope. And without hope, what is there? Right. right. So there, I, I mean, that opens that wow. a whole nother pathway for them. And, and I think, I, I mean, I know that your program has been a, a big part of that. Kevin, I just, I couldn't thank you more. I really appreciate your talking from your heart and what you've noticed and the impact and how significant this work has been able to be. So with all my heart, thank you so much for calling us and continuing to call us and in giving us a chance to work with your terrific kids. Uh, you're welcome. I, I think that our relationship and the, and the relationship that you've had with our students has been a great thing and it's, and it's, uh, it's made our program special and, I, and we want to continue that relationship into the future. For sure, we, we will do a, all our part to do so, so, so thank you. Thank you as well. Thank you so much. Kevin.